Welcome to our IROS 2020 presentation of our paper entitled Risk Averse MPC via Visual Inertial Input and Recurrent Networks for Online Collision Avoidance. This has been a collaborative project between the Robotics and Mechanisms Laboratory, the Laboratory for Embedded Machines and Ubiquitous Robots, and the UCLA Vision Lab. Before we begin, we would like to thank the IROS conference and also our reviewers for the opportunity to share this work. The main motivation of this work is to one day have completely autonomous robots and enable them to not only operate in warehouses, but also help with delivery, security, or as first responders in human environments, such as apartments, hospitals, or even in the street walks of our cities. To accomplish this futuristic goal requires a combination of planning, vision, mapping, and intelligence, and seamlessly integrate all of these different components into a single unified planner that can run online and in dynamic environments. To this end, our objective is to create an online pathfinding architecture that moves a robot from an initial pose to a final pose, while assuming the environment is unexplored a priori, has uncertainty due to sensor measurements and robot dynamics, and can detect and avoid obstacles in real time. This objective falls into solving the popular and difficult problem of active SLAM, or sometimes referred to as SPLAM, which stands for Simultaneous Planning, Localization, and Mapping. In other words, where the robot goes depends directly on the map and localization information. The challenge of Active Slam is twofold. First, it requires systematic integration of multiple components, such as vision or high or low level controls, and second, it should account for uncertainty. Dealing with uncertainty can traditionally be done using Bayesian probabilities or using a POMDP. However, these methods tend to be computationally intractable or just not feasible in an online setting. In our work, we consider uncertainty through a learning-based approach, using recurrent neural networks because they're computationally fast, as most of the computation can be offloaded to a training phase. It can also account for temporal factors affecting prediction. And lastly, an agent's behavior with the environment can be modeled. Overall, our approach is to use Model Predictive Control, or MPC, for high-level online path planning, which will be informed by an object detection system for collision avoidance, and an RNN to predict the covariance of future states by being trained on SLAM algorithms and estimations. The goal of the RNN is to allow a quick prediction of future state uncertainty covariances. This is achieved by modeling and then predicting the uncertainty estimates of a filter, such as particle filter or an EKF. To exemplify how the RNN works, we first show the behavior of typical filter equations, which estimate uncertainty as soon as it receives a measurement update. Uncertainty propagation of a filter typically increases when no further measurements are received. The RNN in training models the behavior of uncertainty at each measurement update of a filter. Then in testing, uncertainty after the measurement can be propagated and predicted for future time steps. Ultimately, the RNN would provide uncertainty values which dynamically increases and or decreases at each time step in the MPC prediction horizon, which more realistically models the behavior of localization uncertainty as it depends on the robot's position in the map or environment. Again, this is different than using typical filter equations in which uncertainty is assumed to always increase when propagated for future time steps where measurements are not yet received. Here we show the entire overview of our path planning architecture. Because we're using RNNs, we have an offline training phase and an online testing phase. In the training phase, we have several different maps, where on each map the obstacles are randomly distributed, and the robot goes from an initial pose to a final pose while avoiding all the obstacles. For each map, at every time step, sensor measurements and map features are received by the robot, which serves as input to our SLAM and object detection system. Specifically, we collect estimated robot and feature positions and estimated robot and feature positional covariance matrices and store all this information into a large database in which we run and receive our RNN model. In the testing phase, the RNN model provides us as output the predicted robot collision boundaries at the current and future time steps. We assume the collision boundaries are circles with a radius equivalent to the major axis of the covariance ellipse generated by the covariance matrix. These collision boundaries then serve as input to our MPC algorithm, which is split into three steps. First, in planning, the MPC creates waypoints that get the robot closer to a goal while accounting for measurement updates. Second, between two of these waypoints, a cubic spline is created to provide a smooth reference trajectory. Lastly, MPC then tracks this reference trajectory to provide a center of mass velocity output U, which serves as input to our motion tracking controller. And this process repeats over and over again, for every single map. 
We now go into more detail on each step of our planning architecture. First, we show our MPC equation in the planning phase, which creates waypoints to the goal. Here we have our time invariant linear risk test model with the addition of a non-unit random variant Gaussian noise, where state x is the center of mass position and control variable u is the center of mass linear velocity. We also include a slack variable epsilon, which is discussed shortly. Note that our a and b dynamic matrices assume a simple point mass because we have a motion tracking controller that takes care of our quadrupet dynamics. Lastly, we have a cost function that simply minimizes the current and future states with the goal state over a prediction horizon n. The cost function is under the following constraints. Constraint 1 are simply multiple shooting constraints, while constraints 2 and 3 pose limits on the control and state variables, as well as limiting the amount of acceleration permitted. Finally, we have constraint 5, which will now be discussed in further detail. Essentially, constraint 5 ensures that the collision boundary of the obstacle does not collide with the collision boundary of the robot at the current and future time steps of the MPC prediction horizon, where x, k, y, k is the position of the robot for time step k, and x, y, and y, o, i is the position of surrounding obstacles, where i is the number of obstacles currently in view. Note that the robot collision boundaries are received by the RNN, while the obstacle collision boundaries are received by an object detection system. To explain the importance of the slack variable, let us first assume the case where we do not include this variable and no uncertainty in localization is assumed. In that case, we will get the scenario shown in A where the collision boundaries do not cross. However, if there is uncertainty in localization, there will be times when the uncertainty forces the collision boundary of the robot inside the obstacle's collision boundary, causing the solver to fail as shown in B. By adding the slack variable epsilon allows the solver to not fail due to these collisions, which is shown in C. Additionally, because slack is a control variable, we can control how much we allow the boundaries to collide by either putting a high or low cost on slack. If we put a high cost on slack, the solver will try to find solutions in which the collision boundaries of the robot and obstacles almost never collide. By putting a low cost on slack, we allow for more risky behavior, in which chance of collisions can increase. An interesting avenue of future study is to relate the cost on slack with a numerical value signifying the probability of collision, potentially using machine learning, in which case a similar functionality as chance constraints could be achieved, but without its computational burden. MPC in the tracking step is similar to the planning step. However, we do add another state and control variable, which signifies the heading angle and angular velocity of the robot. Because the goal of the MPC in the tracking step is to follow a reference trajectory, the reference trajectory is included within the cost function of the MPC and is created using a cubic spline between two waypoints generated by the MPC in the planning step as previously mentioned. We also include constraint 4, which ensures that the robot always faces in the direction of the trajectory. The outputs of this cost function ultimately serve as input to our motion tracking controller to make our robot move. Before applying our methods in a 3D simulation, we first tested on a toy problem in 2D simulation, using particle filter SLAM to provide localization information and an RNN for propagation of uncertainty. Note that our exact methods of formulating our RNN model will be discussed later in the presentation. Here we show our algorithm. Where the black stars are our landmarks, the yellow lines indicate the distance by which the landmark is seen by the robot, the blue ellipses represent the uncertainty in position of the landmarks and the robot, the turquoise line represents the predicted positions of the robot estimated by the MPC. In this 2D simulation, the MPC was programmed so that the robot and landmark collision boundaries do not collide. To demonstrate the online behavior of the algorithm, note that at this point the robot wants to go to the right. It has not seen this landmark yet, and this is the goal point where it's trying to go. However, as soon as it sees the landmark, it switches to the left, which is predicted by an online algorithm. We show the same simulation, but the goal point has changed. We can apply the same algorithm on a moving obstacle because our constraints are constantly updated at every time step. To implement our algorithm in a realistic 3D simulation and also employ actual hardware information, we make the following changes. Instead of particle filter SLAM using a LiDAR system, we instead use visual inertial SAM with access to a camera and an IMU. We also need a motion tracking controller. However, in our case, our quadruped already has one implemented. Lastly, we also need to add an object detection system. First, we show that our MPC algorithms need no further modifications to work on our realistic gazebo simulation. In this gazebo simulation, we have three goal points. As soon as the robot enters one of the goal points, the next goal point is chosen. 
Note that the only input from the user are the goal points themselves. The robot is able to autonomously move and create its own trajectories while using the obstacles as constraints. Here we show our MPC equations on the actual quadruped robot. The solve time averaged 0.1 seconds or less during planning and was further discretized to 0.005 seconds for tracking, demonstrating that our nonlinear solver was computationally satisfactory. To make our algorithm more realistic, we now add a camera and an object detection system. To do this, we use a custom trained CNN model for real time object detection using the YOLO v3 package. From the object detector, we receive the coordinates of the bounding boxes and also implement standard computer vision components by using key point detections with orb features. By combining the information of the key points and the bounding boxes, we can estimate the size of our 3D boxes, which were then converted into collision boundaries and embedded as constraints into our MPC cost function. We now showed a gazebo simulation of our quadruped using the object detector and key point detection system. The last component of our algorithm includes the recurrent neural network, which is used to predict the uncertainty of robot position using SLAM estimation. This uncertainty is considered to build the collision boundaries for the MPC prediction horizon. The SLAM that we use is called XEVO, which is a visual inertial odometry algorithm publicly available from the UCLA Vision Lab GitHub repository. The inputs to XEVO are the robot's IMU data, in our case we use the robot's real IMU, and also the RGBD images from a real sense camera. The outputs of Xevo are the feature locations, robot position, and the robot covariance matrices in position. The idea of the RNN is to model the inputs which are 18 units, the robot location in X, Y, and Z, and the five closest feature locations in X, Y, and Z to the outputs which are 4 units, the robot covariance in X and Y. The reason for choosing 5 features was arbitrary. However, in our case, 5 or more feature locations are necessary to receive a significant training loss using the mean squared error loss function as seen in this graph. Here we show visually our SLAM algorithm in action, where the left video demonstrates SLAM on our quadruped robot with the addition of our obstacle detector, and the video on the right demonstrates our SLAM on the TUM dataset. Important to note is that our RNN was trained using real IMU and camera information using actual hardware and not with gazebo. We did this to ensure that our RNN could model realistic hardware information. Now we show our results using our complete algorithm, combining the individual components discussed previously. First, we show the results of a baseline MPC, meaning that no uncertainty is considered, or localization is assumed perfect. However, because the simulation does assume noise and the MPC is not aware of this noise, we see a collision between the robot and the obstacle. On the left, we see a naive MPC implementation, meaning that the uncertainty boundaries of the robot are kept static and are inflated for all time steps of the MPC prediction horizon. While the robot now evades the obstacle, it does so in a non-optimized way, as its planned trajectories are too conservative. Lastly, for the video on the right, our MPC is combined with our RNN, where the uncertainty is now dynamically propagated, meaning that the collision boundaries may shrink or grow depending on the RNN model. This causes the robot to plan paths that are both safe, which means avoiding the collisions, but also fast, meaning getting to the goal as quickly as possible. Here you see the same results, but in a pictorial form. Here you can see the red path, which results in the collision using the baseline MPC, and then also the blue path, which is the naive MPC implementation, and finally the green path, which is using our own algorithm. We believe that our work, which shows a complete end-to-end -end algorithm for autonomous navigation in robotic systems through the combination of several fields in robotics, including motion planning, vision, and machine learning, to be one of the necessary steps in achieving the dream of completely autonomous robots. We thank everyone for listening and wish everyone a great rest of the conference.